The Emperor traveled west on the back of a dragon. He wanted to build a new town somewhere to expand his kingdom, but also to maintain peace with the warlords he was allied with. Finally, crossing a desert filled with statues made of ash, bones of jewels, lakes of lava, and the only roads that were cut from marble and supposedly built by the Shadow King, connecting the Emperor to the lands even further west. As much as the Emperor was proud of what he had built, from the construction of barriers and forts protecting himself from the north, trade with the islands, trade with dawn, trade with worlds beyond, and even peace with the warlords who literally had war in their names, he felt that others had more than he ever did. Much of the Emperor's land was his by decree. It was actually in the hands of others who were loyal to him, but could turn at any time. Or the lands belonged to barbarians who didn't even know there was an emperor, let alone bother or paying taxes, servitude, or even corn towards his cause. By exploring these barbaric lands, he was hoping to start a new town where he could trade ash and jewels with the lands to the west to gain wealth and to hire mercenaries to help keep his lands under his control. Crossing mountains west of the desert, he found something he didn't expect. A massive oasis spanning the valley between the mountains. It was like an island, and the mountains were waves and stone forever crusting, but never crashing, and never letting up in the sea of sand. The dragon flew down to a spring near the mountain's peak. The sand was made of a, was made of black substance and the water flowed from what looked like a stone in a very small, very peaceful waterfall. The Emperor leaned down to drink from the water. Refreshed after a handful of water, he cupped his hands and held the water above his head to let his friend, the dragon, drink from his hand. In thanks, his friend licked the Emperor's head, and a small woman's voice spoke. Welcome to my spring, honored guest. Do you bring the hostess a gift? The emperor turned and saw a beautiful woman. Her hair was long as was long and down to her waist, and her arms were as thick as chains. The emperor opened his pouch and pulled out five golden prime. He offered the five ounces of gold to the woman, and she took it from his hand before tossing at his feet. Gift for the hostess, not payment for the water, she said with a laugh, revealing her sharpened teeth and the salt in her spit. She smiled again at both the Emperor and then the Dragon. No longer a small woman with strong arms, she now stood as tall as the Emperor, with her hair combed back and her arms scarred as a warrior from the northern provinces. The Emperor opened his pouch and pulled out a flower, a lotus, a gift from one of his wives and one he now felt he had to give to the woman who he now felt was a larger threat to him than his dragon friend could possibly hope to match. The woman took the lotus in her hand and tossed it into the bubbling water. Her hair was like, now like the forest of a mountain, and her arms were now large enough to crush a city in her embrace. Eyeing down at both the emperor and his dragon like they were pests, her voice shook the earth with her mouth sealed. I said a gift for the hostess, not a sign of love. Her voice boomed, shaking both the emperor and the dragon off their feet. After the Emperor thought long and hard, he stood up, his blue robes covered in mud and his dragon's shiny green scales dulled by the dust of the earth. The Emperor reached into his satchel one last time and pulled out the last thing inside, a small cloth. A little cloth that had his name inscribed onto it, something he created a long time ago when he was young and wanted to own something with his name on it. The woman was no longer a giant and she was once again a small woman. She eagerly grabbed the cloth out of his hands. Smiling with white teeth that reflected neither sharpness nor salt, she looked up to the Emperor. Oh, I love this gift, and as such, I will agree to host you, she said, pointing up to the peak and down at the valley. All of this land will be yours to build a town for. I know why you are here, and I accept your offering to build a town. The woman turned to the water where the lotus had reached the shore, and she gave the lotus back to the Emperor. This water is the fountain of immortality. Though any who drink from these waters are made immortal and unkillable by anything on this earth, 
except for what lives in those caves. She pointed to a cave across the valley. It looked dark and no nothing could be known about what was inside. Those caves contain the end. Those waters kill any who consume it or any weapon that can be made from that water. Even immortals can be killed. The woman turned and spread her arms out wide. A marble road was formed and the mountains moved to create a pass from the fertile valley to the desert. A long straight road appeared through the desert, her connecting to the distant capital city. The woman vanished, but her words lingered. This valley is yours to do what you wish, but the consequences of this place are yours and yours alone. The emperor got onto his dragon friend's back and rode the route from the valley to the capital. Before the year was out, the now immortal emperor founded new town within the valley, but the woman's words still lingered. He feared the cost of what he gained in exchange. By gaining immortality of both body and soul, he lost immortality of another kind, his name. And now, neither he nor anyone else knew his own name.